Hey guys, my name is Jason with Mount Baker Mining and Metals, and today I wanted to do a little video showcasing our 4x8 shaker table and talk about some of the uses and some of the features of our table that differentiates it from other tables, uh, give you some instructional and operational guidelines on it, and talk about the different uses we've seen uh, our shaker table being used for. So we're going to go through all that. Um, so let's start with the shaker table top itself. Here's the feed end of the shaker table. And this aluminum distributor trough is where the material would be fed into. The water bar will wet the material in the trough, and these gate valves can be adjusted to make sure the flow of material is even onto the shaker table. The shaker table top is made out of EPDM rubber, and we cut grooves into the rubber to reduce the turbulence on the tabletop and capture that really, really dense material. There's a couple things that are unique about our shaker table. One is there are two flat sections of the shaker table, and then in the middle there's a ramp that actually separates the dense material from the lighter gang. So here is where the tailings would flow down into the tailings trough. This is a flat plane starting about here, running diagonally at 45 degrees down the shaker table, and ending about here is a ramp that we build into the shaker table top, and it's about a quarter inch distance from the top to the bottom, and this allows the dense material to stay in the grooves and come up the ramp, but the light material, the quartz or plastic or any other light and less dense material, stops here at the end of these grooves and can't make it up the ramp, and it, they flow down into the tailings trough. Once the dense material is up here past the ramp, there are no more grooves, and that allows for the flat plateau up here to clean the material. The water will wash any less dense material away and the gold or heavy metals will form a band right under this water bar, come down into the number one or number two ports here on our shaker table. At the, at the edge of the shaker table there are two grooves that run all the way across these are called our safety grooves, and if there is any material that reaches uh, the edge of the shaker table, they're captured by these safety grooves and comes across this way. We've seen uh, some material that's round, uh, like spheres, sometimes will roll down and be caught by these safety grooves. So that's an important feature of our table as well. So one more thing about the rubber itself. This is, again, EPDM rubber. It's torch down roofing that they use for rooftops in all sorts of environments. We've had shaker tables running uh, up in the Yukon that have been snowed on and froze. We've had shaker tables running on the equator in Africa. And so the, the shaker table top and the rubber is very hardy. It's very chemical resistant, UV resistant, and can be run across the whole spectrum of conditions. Here's the number four port for our shaker table, and all the light material will wash its way across these grooves into the number four port, or the tailings port, which can be discharged to waste or to a classifier. If there are uh, dense materials that can't quite make it up the ramp, such as sulfides or some of your lighter base metals, they will form a band at the end of these grooves here. It's on the ramp at this point, but once the material comes out of these grooves, it can't climb the ramp, and so it forms a band all the way down here that runs into our number three port, sometimes called the middlings or sometimes called the concentrates. And this will be a, a, a mid-range value. You can take this material and rerun it onto the shaker table to further upgrade it or grind it finer and rerun it, but this is where uh, some of the, the material will be captured that may have value, but it may not be a high enough grade. All right, I wanted to talk a little bit about the mechanics of the shaker table now. Our shaker table top is supported by four different sets of springs, and these are just steel sheet springs that hold the shaker table top to the base. They're angled at about 15 degrees, and when the shaker table moves, it forces the material to not only move across the table towards the high grade end, but also gives it a little throw up. And so you, you, the, the force allows the material to hop down the grooves. If they're straight up and down, nothing goes anywhere. It just goes back and forth. As you come across the shaker table towards the high grade end or the cleaning plane, 
There's another set of springs here. This is the water manifold that goes to the water bars. And finally, you come to the, uh, the drive mechanism for the shaker table. And we'll take this guard off here and so you can see the mechanism. But here's the push rod that connects the shaker table top to the drive mechanism. So let's take this guard off and we'll take a look at how it works. So we've taken the guard off our drive mechanism here and I wanted to walk you through the steps real quick and show you how easy this thing is and how simple it is. This is a half horse electric motor and this can be either single phase or three phase depending on your specs. It's run by a single belt onto a large wheel here. There's a small eccentric shaft that is held up by two standard bearings. This push rod connects the eccentric shaft to the shaker table and as the shaft goes around, the shaker table goes forward and backward. It operates at about 325 RPM. And there's a few things that I want to note while we're under here. There are a few things that are not adjustable on the shaker table that I wanted to mention. One is the speed or the RPM. That is constant at 325. You cannot adjust the throw or the shake of the shaker table. Those are all uh, taken care of by this eccentric shaft. And also with our shaker table, there's no bump or jerk um, or anything like that. It's a nice, even cyclical movement. And again, we're trying to keep the turbulence on the shaker table as low as possible to capture all that fine gold or that dense material. On the initial setup of the shaker table, uh, you're gonna need to level the table and we're gonna show you how to do that right now. So in line with the grooves, needs to be level across, and the slope towards the tailings trough should be a quarter inch per foot down sloping towards the tailings trough so the material can flow with the water towards the tailings trough. The adjustment on how to set that up is down here on the shaker table legs. The shaker table legs are each slotted and there's two bolts that you loosen to adjust the throw of the leg and in doing so you can adjust the level of the shaker table. So we found that this is really the easiest way to adjust the shaker table is you loosen the nuts on the legs on the sides you want to adjust. You get a fulcrum and a lever and then it's easiest done with two people but I'll show you the mechanism here. One person will press down on the lever when the legs are loose, they stay flat on the ground. Well, another person watches the level on the shaker table. And when the level shows level, they tell the person to stop. And then the bolts, the nuts can be tightened back up to hold the shaker table in place. So once the correct position for the shaker table top has been attained, you can come back and tighten up these nuts and lock the shaker table in place. When I'm adjusting the shaker table, I like to only tighten the top nut to start with so that you can easily adjust each leg if you need to. When it's all level like you like it, come back and you can tighten down the bottom nut to hold the shaker table in place. So in leveling the shaker table, the easiest way we found to do it is by spacing off about two, uh, half an inch in two feet and then getting your level resting at two feet on that shim. And now we are level in this plane. And then checking to make sure that we're still parallel in line with the grooves. And when using a long level, you want to make sure that you stay away from the ramp because that'll throw off the slant of the shaker table. So we're well away from the ramp, we're level in line with the grooves, we're sloping down towards the tailing trough at a quarter inch per foot or half an inch and two feet. So the shaker table is set up correctly and we found that at these specifications the shaker table works great for all different sorts of material such as gold ore, PCB material, copper chops, this is a really optimal setting for pretty much any density separation. Most shaker tables need to be bolted down to a concrete slab, but ours does not. 
In this situation, we have the shaker table sitting on top of a piece of one inch thick steel plate. And all the shaker table needs is enough weight to hold it down so it doesn't vibrate when it's in operation. And this can be accomplished by putting uh, sacks of rocks on the frame of the shaker table. We've seen that done in a lot of rural places. Um, and while we were in Kenya, that's how we anchored the shaker table down. You could tack it to a large piece of steel like shown here, or you can bolt it to a concrete slab if you have that available. There are four holes, one in each foot, that you can bolt through and anchor bolt through to a concrete slab if you're gonna be working inside um, in, a, in a warehouse or in a shop. So um, as long as the shaker table can be anchored and held down to the floor uh, and isn't, isn't moving around, it's, it can be operated pretty much anywhere uh, that you need to set up the shaker table. So there are two water bars on the shaker table, one here over the cleaning plane and one here over the distributor trough. And they're made of PVC, so they're very easy to replace if they get damaged or broken. And the only adjustment on the water bars is these valves right here. And so these valves can be adjusted to tune the amount of water on the shaker table, both for the distributor trough and for the cleaning plane. And what we found is the shaker table needs to be completely covered in water. There should be no dry spots, no uneven spots with the water flow. But you don't need any more water than you need to do that. So if the shaker table is completely covered with water and there's no rivers of water, the water is nice and evenly distributed across the shaker table, but it's completely wet, that's really the optimal conditions for running the shaker table. So I can adjust the water bars up and down by loosening this bolt. And for the high grade end or the cleaning end of the shaker table, because this table tilts down this way, this water bar is gonna be, need to be level. So all the holes have about even flow coming out of it, which is gonna mean that it's gonna look high on this side because this end of the shaker table is a little bit lower. The feed water bar, again, needs to have fairly even water coming out of the, the holes all the way across. But the important thing is looking at the shaker table top, you can see that the water flow is nice and even. There's hardly any turbulence on the surface. The water is flowing down the ramp towards the number three and number four port. The cleaning plane water bar is tilted back just a little bit so that the streams of water are hitting high on this little ramp here, which allows the gold or the dense material to come up here and make a line right at the bottom of this little ramp that we built into the shaker table top. So you do not want your water bar out here because you'll get little piles of gold or other dense material. You want the water to be spraying high up on this on this uh, on this ridge here, so that there's a nice even flow of water all the way down to the number one port. It should take the water about five to six seconds to go from the distributor trough down to the tailings trough. So I have a little piece of grass we're going to test. One, two, three, four, five. So that's about just the right amount of water flow from one end of the table to the other. And the table uses between five to seven US gallons a minute, which equates to about 20 to 25 liters per minute of water. And the water can be recirculated over and over again if you capture it in a tailings pond and clean the water sufficiently so there's not a bunch of suspended solids in it. The water can be dirty or cloudy but as long as it doesn't have any pudding-like consistency on the shaker table, you can actually uh, run fairly dirty water recirculated for the shaker table to operate correctly. Now we're gonna show a few clips of our shaker table running various material uh, that we've taken over the last couple of years. And we've run everything from gold ore to printed circuit boards, um, copper chops, uh, car shredded material from recycling plants. So the variation of material is, is quite a lot. And so we wanted to share a few clips with you of our shaker table running. Up, up a little bit. 
So all your gold is coming out this first groove. As soon as it gets off this little sandbar of black sand, it's mm -hmm. it's caught in the in the groove. It's going to come down this way. There's some other really heavy stuff, the black sand. That might be where your PGMs are. It's coming down with the gold, but by the time it gets down here, it's pretty much all clean gold. A little bit of black sand is going to carry its way down into the number two. So what we've got here, we've stopped the table in the middle of the process of running the granulated copper chops and what we can see is a high percentage of copper coming out of the top two long grooves working over toward the left under the water bar. This is working extremely well. All the light materials washing down the table. The copper is concentrating at the end of the grooves and coming up the table. There's some other heavy metal, the, the fine stuff is right at the leading edge. There's probably a little bit of brass and copper and maybe some steel. So I have a magnet here and we're going to check this stuff for steel. And there's a little bit in there, but very, very little. It's mostly non-ferrous metal. I stopped feeding the table so you can get kind of a snapshot here where the copper goes. The copper comes across the top grooves here makes a fan down and then works its way up the table this way. The number one and the number two are almost pure metal. And the number three middlings will capture anything that overflows into the, the third port. So thanks for watching our shaker table video. We've been uh, developing and producing shaker tables for over 10 years now, and we're really happy with the product. And we have equipment in over 54 countries currently. Um, and so we're really excited to uh, develop the products more and get them out to the people who need them. So thanks for watching our videos, and we'll see you on the next one.